how cool is generative AI in Photoshop? It's so cool. But in practice, there are five uh, tips and techniques that you need to know to make it work for you and all the jobs. Now I'm super deep in this feature at the moment. I'm updating my uh, Photoshop Essentials and Advanced courses at the moment. And I'm like, it's all in my head. I know so much about it. I know, I'll make a YouTube video. And I'm like, no, I can't, because I'm sick. And hence the scraggly beard and the general pallor and sickiness. And I'm like, oh no, I've got a good idea for a dad joke. And then we'll freeze frame it here and go into Photoshop, ready? Freeze frame. Maybe the eyebrow. So take a screenshot from my video and here we are in Photoshop. Look at that guy, Mr. Sicky Face. Now the basics of Photoshop generative AI is pretty easy. You've all probably seen the Lighthouse tutorial. You select something and you type something in. Let's make me happy. <laughs> um, okay, maybe that's not what I need. Maybe I need some nutrition. Go, go gadget, holding green juice. There you go, that is good. I still don't look very happy. Select background, select subject, invert it. Maybe it's not nutrition. Maybe it's money that I need. There you go. <laughs> Rich people always have money lying around. That's what they do. <laughs> and pillows. There you go, leather cushions and purple. For some reason I need a laptop <laughs> with money pouring out of it. Do you want to all the money car by me? <laughs> there you go, a good solid 80s fringe. That's what I miss. <laughs> Actually money could probably buy me that. All right, my name is Dan Scott and I'm an Adobe certified instructor and a mostly bald course creator at bringyourownlaptop.com. And today I'm gonna to show you the five game-changing ways to use generative AI in Photoshop. All right, the first tip is you don't need to start with an image like old sick Dan there. You can actually just open up a brand new document. This is an Instagram story post that I'm creating for a vintage car show. I worked out that you can just do select all, which is command A on a Mac, control A on a PC, hit generative full and just type in what you want. I want a headlight of a classic car. I want it to be close up. And look at that, awesome. One bonus tip, let's say 1.1, is that generative AI doesn't work really well when using lots of artboards. This is the project that I'm working on, same thing, new artboard, generative fill, exact same thing typed in. The robots <laughs> have a bit of a meltdown. <laughs> Uh, okay, it's pulled images from all of them. So just do them on separate documents and then bring it in afterwards. It'll work better. I want to say Sigourney Weaver from uh, Aliens. Uh, you might be too young. Anyway, that is one of the issues with generative AI and artboards. But awesome source, you can actually just type stuff in and make a completely new document from scratch. All right, feature number two is the do nothing feature. I'm going to use my rectangle marquee tool up here. And if I select you, hold shift and select you and hold you, get really annoyed that this thing follows me around, say pin the bar into the position, move it over there, you stay there. So I've got all these selections and I can say generative fill, or oh, he jumps back, but it's okay. We can leave it empty and just hit generate and we can use it like the clone tool stamp or the healing brush or the patch tool or the content aware fill. Which one are you using? Let me know in the comments. Because what you'll find is, look at that. Oh, so good. Now it does really complex things as well. Watch this. So I've got the power pole in the background here. Okay, the light post, I need to get rid of it from all of this. Generative fill, here, generate. The pin didn't work. <laughs> it's following me around still. So by doing nothing, look at that, it's gone. Plus, we get variations we can go through and decide which one we want. They all look awesome. Now there's another way to do nothing. I'm gonna grab my crop tool, which is the C key on the keyboard. All right, so I've got the crop tool and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna extend it out so far and I'm gonna type in nothing. I'm just gonna make sure up the top here where it says fill, it's on generative expand or I can click that button. That was easier actually, Dan. Either way, let's hit generate. And somehow, magically, it went back in time and <laughs> took more photograph. Ah, <laughs> oh, so good. Great for those kind of like ads that have to be a bit wider or those, uh, I don't know, Facebook banner ads. You just need more background, more space for type. All right, I can't help myself, just one little prompt. My goodness, it's so good. It's my car at the beach. 
Anyway, that's tip two. Doing nothing in those little type boxes can get you where you need to go. Little bonus tip for you, guess what? You can't get it to add text to anything. You can try and it might give you something. Please don't ask what project I was working on. Uh. <laughs> there you go, like and subscribe. All kind of there. <laughs> it's getting worse. Oh, that is the <laughs> that is the best worst one. Yep, you can't add text. <laughs> All right, let's pretend that didn't happen. That's how I uh, get my channel banned. Dan only wearing a choker chain, doing Photoshop tutorials. <laughs> Nobody wants to see. <laughs> All right, feature number three, and that's faded selections. What is it? I've still got my car here. I've got the layer selected. I'm going to go select subject. It's going to pick my car. And what ends up happening is I'm going to say cyberpunk. Okay. And hit generate. And there you go. It's cool, but it's a hundred percent cyberpunk. Okay. What I want to do is like have that car a little bit more cyberpunky. So the trick is I'm going to turn that one off. Click on this bottom layer here. I'm going to select the subject again, and then I'm going to use a tool that I don't use very often. It's the quick mask. So over here, we click on quick mask. So at the moment, it's showing me that I have my car 100% selected and this background not selected. What I'd like to do is grab my paintbrush. Where are you paintbrush? It's B on the keyboard. It's this one here. I'm going to set the opacity to 50%. I'm going to make the size really big. Okay, you can use your uh, square brackets on your keyboard next to P, up and down. Okay, I want something nice and big. So I'm going to paint with one stroke. This is a weird thing to do, don't worry. And kind of tricky if you're new. But kind of essential if you want to get good results out of AI. Anyway, uh, I'm going to click hold my mouse and just paint it in. Not that hard, Dan. So at the moment, I have the background 100% selected and this 50% selected. I'm going to switch back out of this mode. It's going to warn me that it can't actually show me the little marching ants, but guess what? It is selected. I know, it's weird. So at the moment I have half the car kind of selected in terms of the transparency. So if I do the exact same thing, let's have a look. I've kind of only let the, uh, you know, the AI look at half the car. So it kind of uses the car and mixes in its stuff. There you go. <laughs> okay, so still some hints of the car in there. Okay, it's not the complete new car like this one. Cool, huh? Ooh, RX-7. No, RX-3. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Anyway, I'll show you another good use case for it. Okay, good use case might be a little bit strong. Uh, I want to put a beard on me. Okay, so I'm using my lasso tool, the L key. Okay, I'm just using the uh, straight line -y one. You can be really average with these selections. Generative AI is awesome. So I'm just clicking once, clicking once, clicking once, clicking once, all the way back to the beginning. Okay, I've got this thing. I'm gonna save this selection so we can do it twice. Um, okay, so we'll generative fill, we'll type in beard. And what will happen is it'll be somebody else's completely new beard, okay? But if I do the same thing, <laughs> that's kind of weird. Let's load that selection, select, load selection. There it is there, beard. And if I do my trick with the quick selection, grab an appropriate brush tool, okay? B for the brush tool, make sure it's 50%. I'm just gonna kind of paint that out. Switch it back, it's okay and then do the exact same thing with Geronto Fill, type in beard. Hopefully it's gonna match it better to my face and my scraggly white coming through my beard thing. Oh, look at that, much subtler, not very big. You can hit generate more than once. If you don't like the first go, do it again. There you go, that's more kind of, oh, they've even found the ginger bits of my beard, <laughs> okay. Uh, I find lowering the opacity of the selection, which is tricky in the quick selection, makes that kind of merger between fake and original a little bit better. Actually a lot better. Little bonus tip is that all these variations in here create the bigger file size. So if you don't like in them and you have no plan on using them, you can go to hit trash and it will make the file size smaller. Same technique and maybe useful is, first of all, you need to be at the top of your layer orders if you want to do everything to the whole document. I want to change everything. I want to do a select all, zoom out a little bit. So that's Command A on a Mac, Control A on a PC. I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to quick select. I only want half of it. I need a way bigger brush. I'm going to fast forward this while I color in. All right, I should have stopped and actually made a bigger brush. But anyway, I've got that selection. We're going to switch it back. We say OK. And we're going to do Steampunk. OK, 
okay? Or any other artistic style you can think of. Everybody hits steampunk because it looks cool. <laughs> I'm no different. But because I only had half of it selected, <laughs> it's kind of me left. <laughs> Me-ish. If I don't, let me jump to one that doesn't have the 50% selection. There you go. That's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you thought that was kind of not quite right <laughs> look at the green fuzzy ball oh so good but here you go that is like a completely overridden one so knocking it down by 50 percent can give you better-ish <laughs> better-ish results all right next tip all right uh, technique number four uh, it's blending images rather than like uh, faking completely new stuff. Um, often is the case you've got things that you need to like adjust. Okay, it's a picture of an actual thing like this castle here, and you found a sky that you like. Okay, so instead of just kind of clicking and trying to, I don't know, prompt it to do the sky that you want, you actually pick the sky. You just need it to blend. It's a long winded way of saying it. Okay, so existing images, all you need to do is kind of select between the two. I'm going to drag out a box just with my rectangle marquee tool, maybe add this chunk in, and it's going to kind of work. So there's an overlap. The big thing to remember is that um, I'm selected on this middle layer here. It's not going to work. It needs to be on top of everything you want to be included in this blend. Okay, so there you go. That's another tip, bonus tip inside of tip four, tip 4.1. Now, ours is a big kind of change in the day it's done a pretty brilliant job at trying to like make that happen okay so it depends on what you're looking for like i just wanted to kind of you know change it and try and make that kind of settle into a nicer day maybe it's a marketing image you can get fancy i'm going to turn that one off i am going to click on my castle here uh, hands up in the comments who didn't know you could go to select sky <gasps> look you just select the sky remember as well you need to be on the top okay and hit uh, and your top layer you can be on this one if it's turned off it doesn't matter it does have to be the tippy top of your layers panel and holding shift with my rectangle marquee tool to kind of like add the sky plus this gap plus a bit of this so it knows what to kind of blend in how much of the sky you get will give you a different result so let's see what we got and again don't put anything in there and blend away photoshop oh <gasps> how cool we might not be able to use it because it might be like <laughs> what down is in the background <laughs> but you get the idea okay and um, so because that really tight selection around the castle it's actually it kind of like overlaps them a little bit and you can see it's distorting the castle a little bit what we could do to get rid of that is we could click on the castle layer go to edit uh sorry select sky the fancy new thing you've just discovered and what we might do is go to select and you can go to modify and we're going to contract the selection by, I don't know, 20 pixels, just to kind of pull it up from around the edge there. Okay, then I'm gonna grab the same thing, my marquee tool, drag across that, holding shift to add to the selection, and it won't dive so far into the castle. It'll do a little bit still, um, but you can kind of play around with like how close to the edge it is. Like with the tree line, it didn't really matter because we don't mind it messing with that a little bit, but our castle probably um, didn't need to be messed with. All right, that didn't work. Why didn't it work? I'm gonna pretend I did it on purpose. <laughs> okay, because remember I said you have to be on the highest layer. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that off, it's not what I wanted. Actually, I'm gonna undo, go back to my section, make sure you're at the top. Generate fill, one more time, and we're gonna jump cut. Bam, that's actually a really good one. Can you see it didn't add all the extra trees in the background here? So the, what you have selected is super important in uh, generative fill. That's 4.2 tip. Make sure at the top, play around with different selections, and often you can use generative fill just to blend existing images. All right, that's the tip. Next one. Quickly before the last and final tip, uh, if you are following along, this is like an introduction to the generative AI stuff, okay? But if you are really new to Photoshop and some of it's like, man, that was a bit much. <laughs> cool, but much. You might wanna check out what's on the screen here. These are all the things that we do in the Photoshop Essentials course. There'll be a link in the description for that. If you have been using Photoshop for a little while and you're like, ooh, there's stuff I didn't even know, um, you might want to check out my Photoshop Advanced course. We cover stuff like this. Links to both of those courses in the description. All right, tip number five is to leave the kind of key ingredients alone. So if I go through and I say, I'm using my uh, lasso tool at the top here, okay, and I'm just gonna drag around my glasses. Say I wanna replace these glasses. It'll work, kind of, okay? But if I say you, I make them, Retro glasses. 
<laughs> Thank you. Okay, but especially this one here, they've replaced my eyes, okay, because they had them selected. So what you can do is you can do it and replace them. It's pretty cool. Okay, watch. If I do a selection, okay, and I go around, same thing. But if I leave, I'm going to use the option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC, and I say, actually, don't mess with the eye, okay, because those are like very useful for knowing who Dan is. Maybe don't mess with the nose so much either, but you can replace the eyebrows. It should still be recognizable. So same thing, retro glasses. Can you see with my actual eyes in there, it actually still looks real. Still looks like Dan. <laughs> glasses made of snakes. Ah, oh, it's candy snakes. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Same with things like the mouth. Watch this. There you go, I look weird with a different mouth, okay? <laughs> Especially if somebody has teeth. <laughs> so that's not me anymore, it's amazing how much it changes. But, holding option on my Mac, Alt on a PC, I'm going to unselect the mouthy bit, which is very much part of Dan. It's weird that I talk about myself in the third person, yes it is. All right, <laughs> weird but less weird. Ah, oh, it's a shave foam beard, that is so good. But you can see how it still kind of looks like me. It's a sweet beard. There you go. So tip number four is you don't have to select everything. Unselect the bits that you know are key to, especially a person or a feature or a product, then hit generate. All right, uh, that's gonna be us. I've got like another 20 or 30 tips here that I wanted to add, but we are way too long already. Uh, so if you do wanna get all the tips and uh, raise your game in Photoshop, come check out the Illustrator Essentials and Illustrator Advanced course links in the description. All right, hi did I good people. I will see you in another video where I'm healthy again and shaved, maybe a fringe. Bye.